A man arrested last week after police say he was walking around naked has been arrested again. What new charges he's now facing? San Antonio police trying to solve an overnight shooting at a West Side apartment complex. Why officers say they're not getting much help from the victim. Texas is on ice today thanks to a cold front that moved through late last night. Temperatures are going to stay in the 40s with wind chills in the 30s. And tonight there's a potential to see a few snowflakes. I'll tell you about impacts, if any. Not going to be any impacts coming up in just a few minutes. Live from KSA 12. The news at noon starts right now. San Antonio City officials addressing concerns about the coronavirus today. The city, along with regional public health partners, took some time today to answer questions about the coronavirus. Stephanie Cernan now joins us live here in the studio with an update. Stephanie. The assistant city manager assured that there is not a threat of the coronavirus here in San Antonio. City officials say there are no cases of that virus in Bear County or in Texas. In fact, they say the bigger threat is the flu and that 10,000 people in the United States have died from the flu this past year. Now, they did address how people coming back from China to the U.S. and to San Antonio will be screened. Anybody coming to Texas, they say, will have to go through the DFW airport. At DFW Airport, they will be screened by CDC employees and local public health employees to see if they have any symptoms or if they're at high risk for developing those symptoms. If they are, they will be quarantined there. And city officials tell us if these passengers do not have symptoms at the DFW airport when they're screened, they'll return to San Antonio and they will still have to check in with the health department. The department will have all their information and they'll be placed under self quarantine for 14 days. Now, during that time, there will be daily check ins from the health department and fire department. But again, they say no threat here in San Antonio. All right, Stephanie, thank you very much. But in the meantime, Joint Base San Antonio is addressing some of those coronavirus concerns. On Sunday, JBSA announced hundreds of evacuees from China where the virus originated will be temporarily housed in a quarantined zone at JBSA Lackland. Today, JBSA personnel and their families are invited to bring concerns or questions regarding the facility. It starts at 5 o'clock at the Gateway Club, building at that 20, it's building number 2490. Now, the meeting is not open to the public. A Bear County man arrested Tuesday night for performing a sexual act on one of his neighbor's front porch. Uh, the lewd act caught on camera, but this is not the first time we've seen this guy. Sarah Costa spoke with Sheriff Javier Salazar about a string of incidents. 34-year-old Gilbert Ramos, who was arrested last Friday for indecent exposure, arrested again last night. And the new allegations all caught on camera. An affidavit says Ramos was arrested Tuesday and charged with stalking after a resident showed deputies two separate videos of Ramos performing a lewd sex act. The first incident happening last year in November and then again Tuesday morning. It's, it's quite clear that this suspect has not gotten the message to this point. Thankfully, though, uh, doorbell video has played uh, you know, a big part in this case. Uh, you know, we're able to gather enough information to file a felony case on him yesterday. Video from last Friday's incident shows him walking up to another resident's front door naked. Ramos bonded out, then was seen walking around by residents in a thong near a school bus stop Tuesday morning, according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office. You know, these these kiddos are, are just minding their own business, going on, on, their, on the school bus and, and, and going to school and they don't need to see that. And if it continues, we'll continue to file appropriate charges on him as needed. Online records show that Ramos remains in jail for a stalking charge. His bond is set at $12,000. This time, investigators have requested Ramos to have a GPS monitor if he bails out. From North Bear County, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. A pair of robberies and a murder, all cases that are still open. And now San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are hoping you have information on these crimes. The first crime they're talking about is this robbery suspect. Police say on December 6th, this person walked into a 7-Eleven store off of I-35 on the southwest side. A store worker says the suspect first asked to use the restroom, then came back with a gun and demanded money. The person took off with the cash.
Police also want to track down this woman. They tell us that on January 20th, she was seen inside a family dollar on WW White on the east side. Officers say the store manager recognized the woman, saying she steals candles from the store regularly. The manager confronted the suspect and told her to put back some items she had just grabbed and tried to hide. Police say she refused and instead left the store. The manager tried to stop her. The suspect apparently hit the worker. The suspect then took off on a bicycle. And police still looking for the person who killed 31-year-old Maria Rodriguez. Police say somebody stabbed her inside her apartment back in December of 2016. It happened in the 2500 block of Jackson Keller. If you have any information on any of these cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. The sound of gunshots had lots of people out of bed overnight at a west side apartment complex. San Antonio police say that someone took aim at a man about a dozen times in the parking lot on Oral Drive. Only one of the bullets hit him, but it left him in critical condition. Katrina Weber reports the shooting has left his family and police looking for answers. Police had no trouble seeing the aftermath of what people heard at the Marbach Park Apartments. A barrage of gunfire around two this morning had left a man bleeding on the sidewalk from a single wound in his stomach. They say nearby, though, was evidence of all those other shots, about a dozen shell casings. Cars in the parking lot in the 1800 block of Horrell also were left with bullet holes. The victim was rushed to a hospital. That's my big brother. You know, I kind of go crazy if something happened to him, you know. Brian but, uh, Bowles says he's protective yeah, like of his 31 year old brother, who another relative identified as William Jackson Jr. While he was in surgery, Bowles came to the scene looking for answers, wondering if this may have been the result of a robbery. Or he hurt something, and they're, I know they're, they've been trying to uh, break into his truck. Just like police, Bowles says he has no idea who would take aim at his brother. But he says, based on all the damage that was done, he's sure the goal was to kill him. And now he says he's making it his mission to find out who pulled the trigger. Big brother's looking for whoever did it now. You know what I mean? As soon as later, the streets talk. You know, I mean, I'll find out one way or another. Police also hope to find that out, although they say Jackson was not cooperating with investigators. Neighbors told them they saw a silver Cadillac leaving the area at that time. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Two men are recovering after they were shot on the city's west side. Police say one was shot in the leg, the other shot in the leg and wrist. It happened around 1230 this morning in the 7600 block of Stagecoach. That's near Loop 410 and Highway 90. Police say the victims told them that someone wearing a dark hoodie walked up to him and started shooting at him. And that's when they ran and called for help. So far, no one has been arrested. So to come this half hour, the NBA trade deadline is close. The spur could be on the trading block. Larry Mears is here and he's got details on that for us. And it's trade of moving to the future. Welcome to New Hampshire. The presidential race marches on in New Hampshire, and even though we still don't have final results from the Iowa uh, caucuses, two candidates are claiming victory. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest from Manchester, New Hampshire. The numbers aren't final yet, but right now a pair of Democratic presidential candidates say they were victorious in the Iowa caucuses. This is an astonishing victory for our organization, our values, our campaign, and our candidacy. I'm very proud to tell you that last night in Iowa, we received more votes on the first and second round than any other candidate. Both Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Senator Bernie Sanders hoping to capitalize on momentum from Iowa, each holding several events in New Hampshire as they look ahead to next week's primary. Senator Elizabeth Warren, who currently sits in third in Iowa, venting over the continued delay in results. They ought to get it together and release all of the data. So That's what we need. While former Vice President Joe Biden in fourth in the preliminary results is hoping Iowa officials take their time as he leans on New Hampshire voters to right the ship. You guys are going to set the tone for the whole, whole rest of the race. 
And it's time for New Hampshire to speak. Despite millions of dollars spent on thousands of events, the crowded Democratic field that was expected to thin after Iowa still just as crowded in New Hampshire. We always say that Iowa indicates what's ahead in this race. Maybe it is. And maybe what's ahead in this race is we're not going to know the answer to who the Democratic nominee for a lengthy period of process. The Iowa Democratic Party has blamed a coding error in an app they used to take in the caucus results for the delay. Upcoming states have already ensured voters they will not be using the same app. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Live outside with City Cam, you cold? Folks at home cold? And chilly. You know, they've got the heater on in the newsroom. I was actually sweating really in there earlier today. And then now wow. somebody has corrected, has righted the ship. Now the air conditioner's on. I'm confused. My goodness. <laughs> well, I certainly feel comfortable. I've got a nice scarf on. It's chilly outside right now with temperatures still in the 40s and even in the 30s. Quick check of the aquifer. No change over the last 24 hours, but unfortunately the pollen count pretty bad this morning. Mountain cedar is high. We're still in the middle of mountain cedar season. It does come to an end right around Valentine's Day. Ash is high at 670. Mold is moderate at 930 and elm is low at 10. But the big story today is the weather. Take a look at those temperatures. 44 degrees in San Antonio. It's 36 up in Kerrville. And a wide view of Texas. 26 in Amarillo. Comfortable 52 down in Brownsville. I'll be back with a look at how long this cold air will stick around and the potential for precipitation late tonight. This case at Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all-new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. The word rodeo is Spanish for roundup, and there's a good reason for that. The sport we know today would not exist without the horses and cattle brought by the Spanish conquistadors. It all began in 1519 when the first 16 horses were brought to Mexico by the Spanish conquistador Hernando Cortez. But he forgot something. His men desired the riches of the new world, but they soon missed their beef. After conquering the Aztecs in 1521, beef became a top priority for the Spanish. And that same year, an importer named Gregorio de Villalobos brought the first cattle to Mexico. In the years that followed, Cortez became governor of New Spain, and with that, more Spanish began arriving with more cattle and more horses. Eventually, Cortez established a major stock breeding program not far from what is now Mexico City. Over time, the Western style of ranching brought by the Spanish began to evolve. The mixing of cultures in Mexico's unique landscape led to a new way of life and a new type of horseman. We'll talk about the vaqueros of Mexico in the next Rodeo Remembers. And it feels like rodeo weather today. It absolutely it really does. Like every, yeah. Almost every year without fail, there is that shot of cold air during rodeo. And we got a shot of cold air last night. Well, we, we? Yeah, we did. And we're kind of gotten spoiled. We did the rodeo special. We, 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 you know, got it all ready to go for tonight at nine o'clock. Yeah. And while we were taping some of these segments, it was just warm and <laughs> drizzly. Yeah. It really didn't feel like rodeo weather. No, but now it is cold outside and there's a small potential for a few snowflakes later on tonight. Night. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast right now outside though it is 44 degrees dew points are 10 degrees cooler dew point at 34. We've got a wind from the north right now at about 15 miles per hour that gives us a wind chill in the 30s. It feels like it's 38 degrees in San Antonio. Take a look at the radar and satellite really not seeing much around the Alamo City, but let's go ahead and zoom into Valverde County, especially northern Valverde County, the higher elevations there. You can see there is some in indication of very light precipitation from Langtree up to Juneau of some very light snow, likely not accumulating or causing any kind of problems on those rural roads out there in Highway 90. But we'll keep an eye on it, of course. And again, here in San Antonio, things are pretty dry other than a few sprinkles and a few areas of mist as well. And we'll talk about our chance for precipitation later on. But first, let's take a look at temperatures. 36 in Kerrville, 30 below freezing in Rock Springs. It's 30, uh, 45 in New Braunfels, 43 in Hondo, 47 in Beeville. I showed you this picture of Texas before the break here, but look at these temperatures. 26 in Amarillo and Lubbock. Amarillo was in the teens this morning and Brownsville was in the 70s. A very large temperature spread across the state of Texas, but generally now all of us pretty much on the cold side of this front. 
Our weather setup is interesting across the South Plains. Take a look at that ahead of this front. There's a tornado watch for parts of Louisiana and Mississippi, but most of Texas, a good chunk of Texas right now, especially west of Dallas and west of 35 is dealing with uh, the uh, snowfall. In fact, some places like Midland Odessa have seen six inches of rain east of Lubbock, some pockets of about a foot of uh, uh, snowfall, uh, six inches of snow rather out near uh, Midland. And so Highway 20, I-20 right now is covered in snow from many places from Abilene down to Pecos. So it's really interesting to see just how potent this winter storm has been. We are not going to see that big chunk of snow moving to San Antonio, so we don't need to worry about that. But there is a piece of upper level energy right over El Paso right now that is going to push off to the east and make it to San Antonio by late this evening. So between about 9 to midnight, we have a chance for some precipitation. Let's take you through the future cast as temperatures dip close to freezing with that potential for that precipitation, especially up in the hill country. There could be a few snowflakes mixed in with very light rain. The catch is it's going to be so dry at the surface that some of this rain and even snow will actually melt uh, and evaporate before it hits the surface. So that's why right now we're thinking very light rain with the possibility of a few snowflakes between 9 to midnight today. As you can see, we'll likely stay above freezing in San Antonio when we have that chance for precipitation, but it should be below freezing up in the hill country. Then we'll clear out and temperatures will really plummet before sunrise tomorrow. We'll be in the low to mid 20s in the hill country and we'll be right near 30 degrees in San Antonio tomorrow morning. So if you do have any of those plants that have been enjoying the spring like winter, you might want to cover them or bring them inside uh, late tonight. So for the rest of the day, like I said, it's going to stay pretty cloudy, breezy with a wind from the north up to 25. A few peaks of sunshine possible in the afternoon, but still it's going to be pretty cloudy. 47 for the high, but feeling like it's in the 30s. And then between 9 to midnight, we'll have a 30% chance for a light mix. A few snowflakes possible in there. Then tomorrow morning, we'll wake up right near 31. Wind chills will be in the 20s then. West wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour and we'll warm up really nicely under complete sunshine. We'll be at 57 in the afternoon. It'll be a chilly and clear Thursday evening. And if you thought this cool weather was going to stick around, Nope, we'll be back at 70 degrees <laughs> on Friday. There you go. Now there's some good rodeo weather. That Thank you. Some good rodeo weather, yeah. Speaking of the rodeo, the rodeo road trip going on, and apparently <laughs> they're getting bucked off early. This is a very tough road trip for this mm. year's Spurs. They lost yeah. to the Clippers, and then they lost to the Lakers last night. LeBron James had a massive fourth quarter. I mean, he was just on fire. Plus, we have some high school hoops from last night. Girls action featuring Medina Valley and Harlan coming up. On the defensive end, you held LeBron James without a field goal in that first quarter. What are you guys doing uh, to, to limit him thus far? Hell, I don't know. He, he's, I think he's just getting into the game. It wasn't any kind of plan on my part, let me tell you that. Oh, that's pop being pop, and the Spurs had no answer for LeBron in the fourth quarter in Big Board Sports. Spurs annual rodeo road trip is off to a rough start, now 0-2 after losing to the Lakers last night. First quarter, DeMar DeRozan with the ball, crosses over Anthony Davis, delivering a floater in the lane. Good. Rudy Gay off the back of the iron, but Lonnie Walker, the fourth inside for the putback jam. We're tied at 19 just before the end of the first quarter now. When Davis goes over to LaMarcus, and the Lakers take a 21-19 lead. Now in the second quarter, Derek White finds DeMar with a bounce pass, and that results in a reverse lane. Up, but the Lakers open up a double digit lead when LeBron throws it down. That made it a 10 point advantage in the second. The Lakers up 51 41 at halftime. Third frame, DeMar jams down two of his 14 third quarter points. He led San Antonio with 28. Spurs trailed 87 74 after three. Final quarter, well, LeBron blows the game open from beyond the arc, sinking five three pointers in the first three and a half minutes, pushing the Lakers lead to 21 at the time. LA wins 129 to 102. LeBron scoring a game high 36 with 19 of those 
coming in the fourth. So the Spurs will resume the rodeo road trip Thursday night at the Portland Trailblazers. The Spurs are shopping Damari Carroll before the NBA trade deadline this Thursday, according to a number of reports. He's only played in 15 games this season after signing a three year $21 million deal with the Spurs, but his guaranteed money of $7 million this year and $8 million next year may be too much for other teams. NBA is changing the format for this season's three-point contest during All-Star Saturday in Chicago, adding a pair of deep shots that will be worth three points apiece. The league says the change means each round will now be a total of 27 shots instead of 25, and competitors will get 70 seconds to finish their shots instead of one minute. The two additional shots will come six feet beyond the three-point line and will be taken with a green ball. The reason for the change, to mirror players making 300 shots from at least 30 feet this season. The Roosevelt Rough Riders looking to stay undefeated in District 27 6A last night behind big 6'11 Jared Hall taking on South Sand who are in third place. Hall is a beast on the court. Look at him going to the lane with the jump hook to get the Rough Riders off to a good start. But even with the Riders dominance inside, the Bobcats are on from outside. A three by Derek Sanchez to keep it close. Now the Riders' Corey Jackson takes it in to deliver a dish to Rashad Owens, who takes it in for the slam. And the Rough Riders score a 46-42 victory, improving the 10-0 in district. Girls basketball now, Medina Valley Panthers visiting the Harlan Hawks. Battle of the two best teams in District 27-28-5A with only one district loss between them. Hawks jump out to big league in the first half behind Ariel Gordon's nice up fake and jumper down low. Her teammate Layla Conley now is able to find Janae Henry for two more points. Panthers trying to get back into this game as Addison Gunther gets open for her three, but the Hawks go to 14-0 in district with a final of 66 to 32. Wow. Harlan. And that 33 for Roosevelt, mm -hmm. that young guy? Yeah. He looks huge. Yeah, he's a big what was his name? Hall. Was Hall. Like yeah, that? he's a big talented player, that's for Ooh, sure. That guy's big. <laughs> Not Shaq big. Not quite. Not well, quite. Perhaps. I don't you never think, know. I don't think anybody's still shy. growing. <laughs> All right. You got a lot. Thanks, Larry. You got it. New today at five. Sugar, spice, and so many baked goods. It's what you'll find inside one local bakery tucked away in the south side. Coming up today on the news at five, we take you inside Lux Bakery, the largest producer of gingerbread in the state. to Get the scoop on their recipe for success. It's a small business story today at five after entertainment tonight. The president's impeachment trial in its final day as senators prepare for a final vote. In the Republican-controlled Senate, there are not enough votes to reach the two-thirds majority required to convict the president on either article of impeachment, obstruction of Congress or abuse of power. During the trial, Democrats had hoped to introduce new witness testimony and documents, but they did not secure enough Republican votes to do so. Today's vote is expected to take place later this afternoon. We will bring you the latest on the air and online. The president likely to respond to his expected acquittal sometime today or tomorrow. More American citizens have been evacuated from China amid the ongoing coronavirus outbreak. Passengers required to spend at least two weeks in quarantine on one of four military bases across the country, including here in San Antonio, to prevent further spread. This as the number of those who have died from coronavirus grows to nearly 500 and more than 24,000 people are now infected, mostly in China. ABC's Julian McFarland has more for us. This morning, two planes carrying hundreds of Americans touching down in California. Passengers from the stricken city of Wuhan, the Chinese city at the center of the outbreak, have to spend two weeks in quarantine. This Wisconsin family just happy to be back on home soil after a grueling journey. Sam Roth was there to pick up his wife and daughters who had been in Wuhan visiting family. They arrived at the airport at 3 p.m. on Tuesday and they did not take off until more than 24 hours later. And that's an airport with no shops open. It was just waiting and getting their temperature taken, and it was really exhausting for my wife and my daughters. And now another cruise ship quarantined. A cruise ship docked in Hong Kong Harbor carrying 1,800 people, testing passengers for the coronavirus, after the city's health officials said dozens of crew members were showing symptoms. Right now, the ship is in crisis mode. This is a once-in-a-lifetime medical emergency. But the outbreak, now in its third month, is taking a toll on the Chinese economy. 
With people staying at home in Beijing, businesses are feeling the pinch. This restaurant worker says the impact is considerable. Our restaurant had 20 employees, and some of them went home, some stayed. This affects the income, and we have no customers now. There were also positive cases of coronavirus confirmed among the passengers on the other cruise ship that is docked in Japan. Meanwhile, China is stepping up efforts to contain the spread, with 18 million people in the eastern part of the country required to stay at home. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. 28 people have now died after a pair of avalanches in eastern Turkey. The second avalanche hit as rescue workers were going to find two people who had disappeared after the first avalanche hit the area yesterday. At least 23 rescue workers were killed. Several were buried under the snow. They had to be rescued before being taken to the hospital. Five people died when the first avalanche hit yesterday. Kansas City police arrested two people after a police chase ended in a crash on the edge of the Super Bowl parade route. Kansas City police say the car broke through the barrier on the north side of the parade route. The driver went over stop sticks, kept going until they eventually turned toward the crowd. Officers were able to eventually stop that driver by crashing into him. No one was hurt. Police say the driver is being checked out to see if they were under the influence. Live look outside on this chilly day out there. 44 degrees, but Sarah, it feels colder than that. Oh, uh, yeah, it definitely does. And that's because those winds are pretty strong from the north. They're starting to calm down a little bit, but we're still dealing with a wind from the north at about 15 miles per hour. So because of that, wind chill. Uh, take a look at it. 38. That's what it feels like in San Antonio. Meanwhile, it feels like it's in the 20s up in Kerrville. Feels like it's 29 in Kerrville. And it feels even colder out in Rock Springs right now. Current temperature in Rock Springs is 30 degrees, but it feels like 19. It's not only us in San Antonio that are cold uh, across the state of Texas. Temperatures are below freezing in many places through Amarillo down to Midland, Odessa, which, by the way, got as much as six to eight inches of snow earlier this morning. Uh, taking a look, though, at that, you can see the band of snowfall from Wichita Falls down to parts of West Texas and even near El Paso. All that snow also tracking up toward uh, just south of Chicago and even with this massive system. We've got a tornado watch going on in parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. So the biggest question is, will we see any of this snow that's going on right there near the Midland and Odessa area? Well, there is a small potential as that low gets closer to us that we'll see some light precipitation tonight, but I'll detail whether or not we'll see any snowflakes coming up in the full forecast. David. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, with hectic schedules and long lists of what to do, many of us can't imagine squeezing in a session of meditation. But meditation actually has profound impacts on your body and your mind. It may convince you to reconsider. With more, here's Max Massey. Our lives are busy with work, school, friends, and family. Sometimes we forget to hit the pause button and take a moment to take a breath. Carving out even just five minutes a day to meditate can restore calmness and reduce tension and worry. All of this is according to experts at the Mayo Clinic. You can meditate wherever you are, whether you're out for a walk, riding the bus, going to work, or even just before a stressful meeting. Meditation comes in many forms. You have to find what's best for you. The key, though, is to focus your attention and eliminate the stream of jumbled thoughts clouding your mind. Meditation has also been shown to promote physical health, help manage symptoms for chronic health conditions, and even reduce inflammation. So try to incorporate a brief meditation session before your day. As you start, don't judge your meditation skills. It'll get easier and feel better with time. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Coming up in a few minutes of sports, we're going to get an up-close and personal look at the new head coach of Baylor. Larry Ramirez has that. NASA astronaut Christina Koch is returning to Earth from the International Space Station. How she made history during this mission. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Size becoming an issue for a discount furniture store, IKEA. The company says it's experimenting with smaller showrooms that would be a better fit for downtown areas instead of its giant blue and yellow warehouses. Kia wants to open 30 smaller stores in cities around the world. 
Those stores will roll out in the coming years. It's already launched what a spokesperson says is its first small format city store in London. Cadillac's newest Escalade is going to be able to drive itself on major highways without the driver even having to hold the steering wheel or put their foot on the pedal. In an in-car camera is going to make sure that the driver actually is watching the road ahead, though. The new Escalade also offering augmented reality navigation with three-dimensional sound cues. The company says the new Escalade will go on sale this summer. Cadillac has not said how much this thing's going to cost, though. Oh, yeah, like it's going to be cheap. Oh What's that going to do, like, up in wintry places like in New England and stuff, where there's snow and ice all over the roads or in Colorado or someplace? Oh, David, your guess is as good as yeah, mine. Wrecker, too. There. I okay. know. But, you know, outside right now, it is so cold, and uh, we're able to see uh, really the small potential late tonight for some light precipitation. And uh, that could be a little interesting. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast, but we have got a lot to talk about in the pollen count today, too. Unfortunately, mountain cedar is high past 1100. Ash is high, too, at 670. Mold is moderate at 930 and Elm is present in low amounts. So like I said, a lot to talk about in the forecast. I've got a recap of the next seven days and this cold air and how long it'll stick around coming up. Cutest kids out there, the Mutton Busters. Uh, I'll get trophies. <laughs> all good guys. Well, you got to get some for getting on the back of I was about to say, that is one case where I think they don't deserve it. a trophy and a buckle. And you get to hang out with Miss Rodeo Texas. How yeah. fun. And all those cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's like one of my favorite parts about the show to see the mud yeah. So oh, that's yeah. pretty awesome. The cute factor goes to like 11. <laughs> it really yeah. does. It really does. You know, it's so cold outside, guys. I stepped outside just to go get some tacos earlier this morning during my lunch break, uh -huh. and I was bundled up from head to toe. Oh, yeah. I had to be. We I finally get to wear our coats. Yeah, and the windshield, too. I thought you were going to say your tacos got cold in the car on the way back and didn't even oh, no. stay warm. I made sure to keep those tacos. No, warm. she got rid of them fast. Yeah, oh. I did. And to eat. <laughs> and, and, and? Oh, she didn't share. Oh, I didn't. Really not. I'm sorry. But, hey, oh. I was going to say happy Meteorologist Day. Oh, thank you. Oh, maybe uh, we should Blue buy new tacos. Bluebell brought us some ice cream yeah. this morning. Oh, yeah. yeah, there was some of that in the break room. You missed that, too? You did? I didn't get any. Oh, my goodness, guys. Well, hey, I'll give you both a forecast, All and that the way nobody has to it. miss out, okay? <laughs> Let's take a look outside right now. It is cloudy and gray. It's 44 degrees. We've got a wind from the north at about 15 miles per hour, and a wind chill. Feels like it's 38 degrees here in San Antonio. Take a look at the radar right now. Quiet around San Antonio, but we look out toward Valverde County, and you can start to see that there's some light precipitation out there uh, between about Langtree and Juneau. Uh, potential for a few flakes out there at the moment, but as you know, this uh, part of uh, Valverde County is fairly rural, uh, not a huge population uh, out there, but uh, there's so because of that, there has not been any reports of a few flakes or anything like that. And the good news is most of the uh, precipitation that's been falling on Highway 90 is likely just some very light cold rain here in San Antonio and around San Antonio. Nothing to report other than possibly a few sprinkles uh, and it's cold right now. 44 degrees in San Antonio, 43 at JBSA Randolph, uh, 45 at Port SA below freezing right now in Lost Maples and in the 30s up in the hill country. It's 36 in Kerrville, 39 in Comfort and 37 at Bernie Stage Airfield. The wider view here, just a couple of places below freezing out toward uh, Real County and Edwards County in Rock Springs right now. It's 30 degrees, but this is what's really impressive. When we look at the 24 hour temperature change, temperatures are anywhere from 30 to even 45 degrees colder than they were this time yesterday. Right around lunch yesterday, we were much warmer. We were close to 70 degrees around lunch. As you can see, uh, it's much colder because of the cold front that moved through last night. Winds are still gusting uh, up to 38 miles per hour down in Eagle Pass and 30 miles per hour out in Del Rio. So it could still be get pretty windy. Uh, and because of that, we've got a wind chill, like I said, in the 30s. It feels like it's in the teens up in Rock Springs. Feels like it's 18 degrees in Rock Springs. Visible satellite, we are under a blanket of cloud cover, not only us here in San Antonio, but really 
across the state of Texas. We do have a little bit of clearing out west and a little bit of clearing in the hill country, uh, pardon me, in the panhandle, uh, but we are really going to be able to uh, see some sunshine tomorrow. We just have to get through the next well, about 12 hours or so of uh, complete cloud cover. Again, the weather setup across the state of Texas is very interesting. You can see that snowfall there uh, from uh, Midland Odessa area all the way even up to south of Chicago. A lot of snowfall across the state of Texas, even areas like Lubbock and Abilene, which often get some snow in the winter time. This is the most snow that they've seen since 2016. So a pretty stout uh, winter storm, uh, all because of this upper level low pressure system that's kind of funneling in that moisture, giving it a little bit of lift. And because the front has moved through, it's just cold enough to produce some snow out there. Here in San Antonio, as this low pushes closer to us, there is going to be a greater chance for precipitation between about nine and midnight. But the thing is, it's all going to come down to how dry it is at the surface. If it's really dry at the surface, which it probably is going to be, a lot of the precipitation is going to evaporate before it even hits the surface. And it's also going to depend on temperatures. Temperatures will get awfully close to freezing up in the hill country between about 9 and midnight. And uh, that's why here's what I think is going to happen. Between 9 and midnight, there is going to be some light precipitation. There may even be a few snowflakes. It will be cool to look at, but it won't do anything to the roads. We'll be just fine. And if you are somebody who likes to exercise extreme caution, I would just say if you're out between 9 and midnight, slow down on bridges and overpasses if you notice that there's a little bit of uh, light rain snow mix. Still, it'll be above freezing before midnight in San Antonio. And then as we head into the evening hours and overnight hours, temperatures will fall to below freezing by Thursday morning with clearing skies. In fact, up in the hill country, it'll be in the mid to upper 20s. So you're going to want to make sure to take any of that sensitive vegetation that you've had out because it's felt like spring and make sure to bring it in or cover it up. Some mountain laurels are blooming and this may have a little bit of a detrimental effect to some of the mountain laurels that are out there. By tomorrow morning, we'll be at near 30 degrees in San Antonio. Again, for the rest of the day, staying pretty cloudy and temperatures only topping off near 47. And then for the day tomorrow, we'll be completely sunny pretty much all day long. 31 in the morning hours wind chills in the 20s west wind at 5 15 57 for the high clear skies and then we'll be at 71 on friday <laughs> back, back into springtime back into springtime indeed all right thank you sir i know we had an early signing day it was back in december for high school mm -hmm. athletes but mm -hmm. today is still really the, the big day for signing day today it? is a big day national signing day and we'll have more on that coming up today at five and six Valero Texas Open, meanwhile, got a big commit today. The soon-to-be number one in the world is on his way. Plus, LeBron James thought he was in the three-point shooting contest last night. Coming up.